This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 201, Wintering. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there, welcome in today. Oh, it's good to be with you this week. How are you? Are we into 2023 20, yet? A little bit? Not even remotely? <laughs> I know. We knew it's coming. We always know it's coming. And then it's here and we're like, wait, what? 2023? The passage of time is something that will always <laughs> and just forevermore blow human minds, right? We just can't understand it, can we? But here we are, 2023, it's happening. And I hope this podcast, I hope this moment finds you well. So this week, I want to talk about a concept that I've been circling around for a while now, something that I keep returning to and have been curious about and have been researching for, well, honestly, for a few years now, actually, because it's a seasonal thing. This isn't something I do other than during this time of year. And that's the idea of wintering. So we're into barely, but we're into 2023. We're into winter. We're into the dark and the cold, these barren days. So I mean, we might as well take a look at it, right? The season, all that comes up during winter, how we feel, how we think about winter, there's something pretty powerful about embracing the season we're in and flowing with it instead of resisting it, instead of working against it. And I find this to be particularly true with people in winter. We tend to hate on winter <laughs> more than other seasons, right? More than other um, phases of the year. And the energy we put towards working against winter, well, I think there's a better way. So I want to explore winter and the concept of wintering with you here today in the hopes that this helps us all to embrace this season and find more ease and find more flow with what is as we live through January and February and even into March here in the Northern Hemisphere. Now for my Aussies, for my South American friends, all of you down in the Southern Hemisphere, winter's coming for you too, so just keep this handy for when it's your turn, right? And honestly, you'll find this is actually less about winter this season. It's not just about weather. It's also about a phase in life, like those eras, those moments, those seasons in our individual lives that feel very wintry. So let's start it out with this. This comes from Catherine May's book. She wrote a memoir and it's called Wintering. And she says this, wintering is a season in the cold. It is a fallow period in life when you're cut off from the world, feeling rejected, sidelined, blocked from progress, or cast into the role of an outsider. Perhaps it results from an illness or a life event, such as a bereavement or the birth of a child. Perhaps it comes from a humiliation or failure. Perhaps you're in a period of transition and have temporarily fallen between two worlds. Some wintering creeps upon us more slowly, accompanying the protracted death of a relationship, the gradual ratcheting up of caring responsibilities as our parents age, the drip, drip, drip of lost confidence. Some are appallingly sudden, like discovering one day that your skills are considered obsolete. The company you worked for has gone bankrupt, or your partner is in love with someone new. However it arrives, 
Wintering is usually involuntary, lonely, and deeply painful. So this is what I want to explore today. (laughs) Fun, right? Winter as a cold, dark season, sure, but also the individual winters that we weather, those barren and fallow and cold phases that we experience as people, right? So I want you to consider a situation, an event, maybe a whole year or multiple years of your life that felt like a winter for you. Perhaps you'd lost something, maybe you lost a job, a pet, a loved one, a friendship. Even, and this is for all of us, consider the loss of normalcy that we all experienced in 2020 when the pandemic hit when things really shifted towards lockdown pandemic life. This could be some kind of internal awakening or a huge change that you experienced. The birth of a child, a new job, moving to a new city, a change, whether it's an ending or the beginning of a romantic relationship, having kids leave for college, having a close friend move away to a different city, all kinds of things in life that thrust us into a winter, into a cold, dark season. And it's worth noting, sometimes those things are really great things. I want to acknowledge that too. Sometimes these are changes that we want or need to make. Sometimes there are things we have 100% complete control over. But that doesn't mean they're always winter free. Change is hard. Change can be terrifying. Even change that we know we want. And to really run with this metaphor, winters are on a spectrum. There are some really mild winters, right? With lovely 60 degree days just sprinkled throughout, keeping us all upright and feeling good. And there are brutal winters. Winters with blizzard conditions, gale force winds, power outages, leaving us in the dark even inside our homes. Now, this example that you're considering, something personal, this is something that you have gotten past. All right, it's over. It's a winter that you've weathered and come out the other side of. Okay, I want to consider something that you're not in the middle of for this episode, for this moment, but something that's come and gone, this loss, this change, not that you have to be 100% okie dokie and over it, but it's not currently happening. You're not wintering with it now. Yeah. Because with some perspective, right, from the vantage point you have now, there are a few things you can really appreciate and recognize about that winter phase of your life. And one of the most important is impermanence. It's not here forever. Winter doesn't stick around forever. It comes and it goes. And inevitably, it comes around again. But it does go. And this is something we must bring awareness to when we're outside of winter. We have to train ourselves to know and believe in the impermanent nature of winter during the spring and the summer and the fall, because to be honest, it's just too damn hard to remember that winter is impermanent when it's winter. It feels endless and we can get a little hopeless with it, even touching in on despair when things get really bleak. But from here, this moment, you can recognize that you've wintered. You've weathered bad storms and dark seasons in your past. And here you are. You've come through it. You've come out the other side again and again. And spoiler alert, you will again. Honestly, if all goes well, you will again. Because winters are seasonal, and the longer we live, we should be so lucky, the more winters we experience, literally and individually, 
right? Seasonally and personally. Yeah. All right. Philosopher and and author Albert, I never know. Is it Camus? Camus. I don't know. C-A-M-U-S. He said this, in the depths of winter, I finally learned that within me, there lay an invincible summer. Ha, ah, this is another way to think about and reframe winter is that we contain multitudes. We contain it all. Summer is within us even as we winter. It's not only all winter. You can see the truth in this, right? Or maybe better said, you can feel the truth in it. Like, have you ever laughed at a funeral? Right? Or found yourself really enjoying a meal even in the midst of terrible news? Have you ever lost track of time doing something that you really enjoy even though your world is kind of crumbling around you? And think about the flip side of this too. Have you ever been annoyed at the airport when you're on vacation? Or felt angry at your partner even though you love them more than is rational? Or have you ever been so glad the holidays are over, even though your kids loved every single second of the mayhem? Right? Life is a both and experience. We don't only winter and we don't only summer. Summer is in the winter and winter is in the summer. It's the cycles of it, always. Life is a 50-50 ride of good and bad. It's always all in there. In the depths of winter, I finally learned that within me, there lay an invincible summer. There's also this invitation to tap into what else is going on. What else is true? Right? This is just a good reminder to pause And look around every once in a while to appreciate the both and nature of the moment, of the hour, the day, the season. Here's another really powerful idea. This one comes from Rumi, who wrote, Don't think the garden loses its ecstasy in winter. It's quiet, but the roots down there are riotous. Now listen, if you're a student of mine, you've heard me say this about a thousand times. I love this quote. First of all, riotous. I love words like that. It evokes such a powerful mental image, right? Riotous. The roots are down there. Riotous. Okay, let's break this one down though. Again, remember a winter of yours. Something you've gone through. And you can back all the way up, right back into it, right? The real depth and the darkness of it. And just pause there for a moment. Really picture it, like the whole context of it, where you were, what you were doing at work during that time, a song that was playing on the radio that was really popular during that time, something that you ate, something that you wore, a friend that you talk to about this, just really bring it fully to life. Those winters, it feels like it's all absolutely lost its ecstasy. It feels so convincingly as if it'll stay forever. Dark, cold, long, barren, miserable. But, okay, now for a moment, let's come out of that experience in your mind's eye and picture a garden in the winter, right? No blooms, no leaves, no color, just sticks, tree branches. Things feel dead and hard and dry and cold. No ecstasy. And it looks like nothing is happening. But that's not true. The roots down there are riotous. The winter is actually necessary for the garden, for the spring, 
for the blooming and the growth and the color and all of it to come back to life. The winter has to happen. There can't be a perpetual spring, a never-ending summer. That's not the way of it. When things go dark and appear dead and fallow, they rebuild, they restore for the coming seasons. There's renewal in the wintering. And it's true with us too. Those seasons that are so dark, so cold, so long, so painful, so difficult, so wearing, those seasons are just as much a part of who we are as the brightness and the vitality and the life and the vibrancy of the spring and the summer. We need the good and the bad. We need the challenging and the easy. Thich Nhat Hanh said, when we suffer, we tend to think that suffering is all there is at that moment and happiness belongs to some other time or place. People often ask, why do I have to suffer? Thinking we should be able to have a life without any suffering is as deluded as thinking we should be able to have a left side without a right side. The same is true of thinking we have a life in which no happiness whatsoever is to be found. If the left says, right, you have to go away, I don't want you, I only want the left, that's nonsense, because then the left would have to stop existing as well. If there's no right, then there's no left. When there is no suffering, there can be no happiness either, and vice versa. That comes from his book, No Mud, No Lotus. So we begin to appreciate the need for wintering, for those fallow, barren, dark times, that without that, the exciting, pleasant, and joyous times wouldn't matter as much. No left without the right. No summer without the winter. And again, I want to remind you to practice with this, to sit with this, to meditate on this kind of stuff when you're not in the heat of the moment. Like when you're doing okay, when you can really practice and be with it. Treat it like mental and emotional homework. This is like boot camp. Because then when you do need it, right, when it's real, when you're taking the show out on the road, It's a training, it's a way of thinking, a way of being, really, that you can fall back on. You don't have to get super creative or resourceful when winter comes because you've been practicing. You know to expect it. You know the winters are coming. And so are the springs and the summers and the falls. All of it, more and more. Okay, Lastly, again, this is from Catherine May from her book, Wintering. Plants and animals don't fight the winter. They don't pretend it's not happening and attempt to carry on living the same lives that they lived in the summer. They prepare. They adapt. They perform extraordinary acts of metamorphosis to get them through. Winter is a time of withdrawing from the world, maximizing scant resources, carrying out acts of brutal efficiency and vanishing from sight. But that's where the transformation occurs. Winter is not the death of the life cycle, but it's crucible. Oh, I love this. Winter is not the death of the life cycle, but it's crucible. Okay, this kind of reemphasizes the point I was making earlier but maybe even better or in a different way. The left side doesn't exist without the right side, right? We need the good and the bad, the winter and the summer. And when we think of winter as the crucible of the life cycle, not the death and end and long dark pause, we reframe how we think about the season but also how we approach our own personal winters. I've talked to a lot of students in the past few weeks who say they're quieter, they're sleeping more, 
They're finding that they're content with fewer social engagements and less going and doing right now. And that's because winter. We're wintering. The opposite is likely true naturally for most of us in the summer months, right? The longer daylight hours, the heat, the bright sun, the vibrancy, it calls on us to be more active, maybe busier, more going and doing. Right now, there's a coziness, right? Winter calls for that, a quiet. Think about how it feels to gather around the fireplace or a fire pit. There's a real quieting to it. Everyone gazes into the flames and silences linger a bit longer. The rest, the downtime, the stillness, we need this to balance out the activity and the productivity and the action that dominates so much of our lives. Winter is not the death of the life cycle, but it's crucible. So the big invitation here is to winter with acceptance, to flow with winter instead of working so hard against it. To view winter as a necessary part of the cycle, seasonally, sure, but also personally, professionally, in relationships, with your health, with finances, creativity, motivation, energy, ambition, all of it. Wintering. To know that this is part of it. I remember my yoga teacher, Janet Stone, during the early months of the pandemic when it felt truly as if things were on pause. It felt like real life wasn't really happening because we were in some twilight zone, like zombie apocalypse pause of COVID pandemic time, right? But Janet reminded us over and over again, this is it. This is life. It's happening. Nothing was on pause. Birthdays, work projects, babies being born, dinner, laundry, happiness, anxiety, politics, music, art, health. It was all still happening. The earth just kept on spinning, COVID or not. There was no pause. It was a weird collective wintering of sorts but not a pause button, no. So again, the reason for this conversation, the offer here is to winter, to practice wintering, to recognize the literal and metaphorical winters when they arise and to work with them, to let them be a crucible for the life that comes after, to accept the winters, the seasons as they are, flow with them. Spring and summer and fall. Again, both the literal and metaphorical seasons. They're all coming. The cycles never end. More good, more bad. More dark, more light. More growth, more stillness. Over and over again. When winter arises, let it Don't fight it. Wintering is okay. It's necessary. It's not something to fear or push against. It's a season to let it, right? To allow, to accept. You don't have to prefer it. You don't even have to like it in order to accept that it's here. Let it be what it is. But when winter arises, let it. Your life will be easier because of it. (sighs) All right. That's what I've got for you today. Wintering. Next week, I'm kind of excited about this. We'll just go ahead and talk about it now. Next week, we're going to talk about breathing. And I'm really looking forward to exploring that with you. It's so important for anxiety. Also, please, please take a quick minute to rate and review the podcast, if you would. 
I would be so grateful and our other friends who are struggling with anxiety, it helps them find the show even easier that way. So I will see you at the same time, same place next week for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes, We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't, and there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject.